Friends, in the last two-part series, we showed the effects and the impacts of the tsunami on Thailand. If you haven't seen the series, you can find the link in the description of this video. In this video, we will explain the effects of the tsunami on more southerly Malaysia, where the wave behaved very differently compared to more northerly Thailand. Friends, welcome to a new video on the Top Topics channel. If you are new here, don't forget to subscribe and let's get going on to the new video. The tsunami that hit Malaysia on Christmas Day 2004 following an exceptionally strong earthquake in the Indian Ocean was a new experience for the Asian country. It was the first time in modern history that this country faced the consequences of such a natural disaster. However, the research has shown that in the distant past this area has encountered tsunamis on several occasions, some of which were far more devastating than the one in 2004, but we will get to that. To understand the behavior and impacts of the 2004 Malaysian tsunami, we need to look at the map. Note that the Malay Peninsula lies almost exactly behind the Indonesian island of Sumatra. And this is the key in the subsequent course of the event. The epicenter of the 9.1 magnitude earthquake was here at this point, and that caused the Sunda Fort to rupture 1300 kilometers northwards into the Andaman Islands region. The island of Sumatra thus acted as a perfect natural barrier, stopping and moving the tsunami energy, which could not travel in direct eastward direction towards Malaysia. For Malaysia, this meant that despite being closer to the epicenter of the earthquake than Thailand, it was spared from the most devastating waves. We know from previous episodes that the Andaman Sea was penetrated by waves from faults that ruptured in the area from the northern tip of Sumatra to the Andaman Islands, opposite which lies Thailand in a direct line. This was the reason why Thailand was hit so devastatingly. But even Malaysia was spared this wave, as it lies much further south on the eastern side of the funnel-shaped and shallow Strait of Malacca. That graphic showed that the waves that made their way towards Malaysia were diffracted waves around the northern tip of Sumatra, where then completely destroyed city of Banda Aceh. In Malaysia, the main areas affected by the tsunami were the northern coastal areas, especially Kuala Muda, and the outlying islands, mainly Penang Island and Langawi Island. The waves first reached the Langawi Island approximately 3 hours after the earthquake with an average speed of 240 km per hour and positive amplitudes near the coast ranging from 2.5 meters to 3.0 meters. The waves then traveled south towards Penang Island with an average positive amplitudes near the coast ranging from 2.0 meters to 3.0 meters while a lower speed of approximately 100 km per hour occurred across the Malacca Strait due to the shallower depth of the sea. Due to the fact that the waves spread in positive amplitude, there was no warning signal in the form of a massive sea retreat. As in the case of Thailand, the wave rolled in suddenly in the form of a raging and very fast flood that raised the sea level immediately by several meters. Most of the tsunami victims were picnickers who were on the beaches when the tsunami struck. Inland, casualties were minimal, and not a single case of death of a foreign tourist was recorded. The maximum tsunami run-up reached from 6 to 8 meters on the islands of Penang, Langavi, and Kuala Muda. Maximum tsunami run-up inland range from 13 meters to 3 kilometers, depending on ocean bathymetry, topography, hydrology, and coastal geology. However, wave energy was successfully dissipated by natural barriers in places, such as the mangrove forests in Pantanake, and the northern part of Langavi Island also suffered less impact as they were protected by mangrove forests. Regarding the structural damage aspect, buildings with different structural systems and building materials suffered different levels of destruction. Along the northwest coast of Malaysia, 
damage patterns such as wall failure, total collapse of wooden buildings, and debris washing away the titling of structures were commonly observed after wave impact. Accordingly, both wooden and masonry houses suffered wall failure when they were hit by waves. The wall panels of these wooden houses suffered enormous damage as the strong waves completely washed them away and subsequently lifted and swept away the floors and roofs. The Malaysian government has embarked on an impressive post-tsunami recovery and reconstruction effort. In addition to financial assistance, temporary housing of wooden and steel longhouses was built to provide safe shelter for approximately 104 affected families, whose homes were no longer habitable. The National Housing Development Corporation implemented a new urban development plan to relocate the tsunami victims. 561 new permanent houses were built in Pangan State and 166 more were built in Kedak State. The total death toll from the tsunami in Malaysia was 75 people and 299 people were severely injured. Malaysia has realized its vulnerability to tsunami waves and is trying to build an effective protection system in the form of breakwaters and cooperate internationally on a warning system. According to government-funded post-2004 tsunami service, Malaysia is vulnerable to tsunamis from several sources. In addition to the threat from the Indian Ocean, they demonstrated the severe impacts caused by tsunamigenic earthquakes on the Sumatra Andaman Fault, which could result in surges of up to 7.5 meters on the islands of Langavi and Penang if east-west faulting were to occur in this region of the Andaman Sea. There are also potential tsunami sources along the Manila Trench near the Philippines, which affects the eastern coast of peninsular Malaysia. Tsunami risk also comes from the Silas Trench in the Silas Sea and the North Sulawesi Trench in the Celebes Sea. Based on the study, the first wave would hit Tambasan Islands about 22 minutes after the occurrence of the Sulu Trench earthquake in which the maximum depth of the inundation would reach 8 meters after an 8.8 .8 magnitude earthquake. It follows that even though Malaysia is a country we do not commonly associate with tsunamis, it is nevertheless permanently at risk from this infamous ocean phenomenon. Let us hope that the country will be well prepared for the next wave to hit. And friends, that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to like, subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you won't miss out any videos in the future. That's it and see you soon.